Hello again, and uh, for this video, we're going to talk about 9-8, solving systems of equations, and these are not systems of linear equations. Okay, When you had systems of linear equations, you'd have a line, and let's say another line, and you might have one solution, a point of intersection. Okay, But now we're going to have solutions of conic sections. So you might have a circle and a line, and have two intersection points. You might have an ellipse and a hyperbola. So you might have four intersection points. Okay. You might have a parabola. And let's say a hyperbola circle. circle. You might have two intersection points, okay? If you had a parabola and an ellipse, maybe it even goes through the vertex. Maybe you've got three intersection points, okay? But you can see how that was moved over. You might have four. So um, in general, if you've got a, two conic sections, two quadratic equations, you could have up to four intersection points. You could have none. You could have a circle and a hyperbola that don't touch at all. You could have zero solutions. You could have one solution. And maybe you had a parabola or a circle that intersects at one point. You could have two solutions. Like over here, you could have three solutions. You could have four solutions, okay? So we're gonna look at a couple of examples. Solve by graphing this thing, uh, uh, system of equations on your Inspire. I'm going to walk you through how to solve this thing on your calculator, but then we're also going to talk about how to solve this um, algebraically. And algebraically, you're going to get exact answers, so your answers might have radicals in them. The calculator is not going to give you those answers. Okay, so I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to open. Let me just go to a new page. Oops. Control. Yeah, I want to add a graphing page. Okay, so I'm going to type this in here. Okay, and the way you can type that in here, you can go, this first one I can type as a function, the second one I can't. I would have to solve for y. And this is actually a relation, it's not a function. You can see with 4x squared plus 4y squared, they have the same coefficient, same sign, so that um, should be a circle. Okay, but I'm going to go to entry edit mode, go menu, and number three, graph entry edit mode. And I can change this. I can use a te equation templates for a line, a parabola, a circle, ellipse, a hyperbola, or a general conic, okay? Or I could just go to a relation. And a relation lets me type in whatever the heck I want. So I can type this in, y equals 2x minus 3. y equals 2x minus 3. Hit enter. There's my line. Then I can type this one. I'm going to hit tab, get another line. I'm still in relation mode in my entry edit. 4x squared plus 4y squared minus 16x plus 24y uh, plus 27 is equal to 0. Okay, that should be a circle. Let's see. Yep, that's a circle. Looks like we have two points of intersection there. Okay, I can solve this on the calculator. I go menu. We can go to geometry, number eight, and go to points and lines, hit enter, and intersection points, number four. Now, it at, up here you can see, if you look up there, you can see that thing means that you're in it, uh, intersection mode. Intersection points, it tells you what to do if you hover over it. Click on the first graph, then click on the second graph, and it's going to find the intersection of those two graphs. The reason it does that, you might have three graphs on the same page. So it wants to know which two you're trying to find the intersection. And notice it gives you decimal approximations. Okay, So this one, 1 1.18 comma negative 0.64. Okay? So one of yours is 1.18 comma negative 0 0.64. I'll just do that to the nearest hundredth, but you can give more decimal places if you want. The other one looks like um, negative 0 0.38, OK? 
comma, um, 3.76. Okay, and that's great. But if I gave you a no calculator test and you gave me these answers, I'd be like, wow, show me how to do that without a calculator. Because if you solve this algebraically, you're going to have radicals in your answer. Your answer is going to be exact. These are not exact because these are irrational numbers. Those decimals go on forever and ever and never repeat. I approximated them. I chopped it off or I rounded to the nearest hundredth. So it's not exact. Okay. So let's go down to number two. And we're going to do this one. We're going to do a couple more problems. And we're going to do them um, just by hand. Okay. This one I think works out really nicely. So notice you've got y equals negative 2x plus 11, and then you've got this mess, okay? I have the y by itself, so I'm going to take y, and I'm going to plug in y into this equation. So this thing gets plugged in for y. This thing, I'm going to square it. So y squared is going to equal this thing squared, so negative 2x plus 11, quantity squared. I'll just square that right now. Again, I'm doing this without a calculator. That's going to be 4x squared. Outers is going to be minus 22x. Inners, another minus 22x, so minus 44x. And then plus 11 times 11, 121. That gets plugged in um, for y squared. So I've got x squared plus y squared, which is this thing. 4x squared minus 44x plus 121. And minus 8x. Uh, plus 14y, so I want 14 times this thing. y is this, 14y is going to be, uh, let's distribute that 14, so negative 2 times 14 is negative 28y, um, plus, oh, 14 times 11, what does that come up to be? Um, I think that's 14 times 10 is 140, one more, 154. Okay, so this next I'm going to add my 14y. I'm going to add minus 28y plus 154 and plus 40 equal to 0. Okay, add your x squareds together. I've got 5x squared. Now your x is together. Um, let's see. And minus... Oh, that's a 28x. Sorry about that. That should be a minus 28x. Good thing I caught that. Okay, so we've got negative. The reason that is because this was y equals negative 2x plus 11. When I multiply by 14, 14 to get 14y, 14 times negative 2x, negative 20x, a 28x, and then 11 times 14 is there. So 5x squared. Adding these x's together, I get minus 80x. And then adding together my constants, I get plus 315 equal to 0. Now I can factor out a 5. x squared minus 16x plus uh, 63 is equal to 0. And that factors x minus 9, x minus 7 equal to 0 and x will equal 7 or 9, okay? Now, don't leave your answers as x equals and y equals. You must give your answers as ordered pairs. Remember, when you're finding intersection points, you can't use the x for this coordinate with the y for this coordinate. Okay? You have to have the correct x and y pairs together, okay? So um, this one is a line and a, that looks like a circle, x squared plus y squared. So there only can be a possible of two intersection points. If you think about a line and a circle, there's no way you can get more than two. Um, and I'm going to plug these in. I can plug my x values in to either equation. I'm going to plug them into the first equation. So when x equals 7, y is going to equal negative 2x, negative 2 times 7 plus 11. So y is going to equal negative 14 plus 11 or negative 3. So I've got the ordered pair 7 comma negative 3. Make sure you put those together. Okay, when x equals positive 9, I'm going to plug that in. y equals negative 2x plus 11. So negative 2x 
plus 11. I get negative 18 plus 11. Oh, that's negative. So I get negative 7. So my ordered pair is x is 9. When x is 9, y is negative 7. Okay? And if you want, you can type that into your calculator. Um, and I think I did type that into my calculator, and I got something like this. Okay? So we could double check. We could do a menu. Let's go to geometry. Let's go to points and lines. Intersection points. Click on the first one. Click on the second one. And I've got 7, negative 3, and 9, negative 7. Okay, so you can see those there. I don't know how well you can see that. It's a little blurry, but um, you can just confirm, verify your answer. Okay, let's go down here. We'll do this next one. Um, this one's a parabola opening to the right, and this one's a line. Okay, since one of them is a line and one of them is a quadratic. So basically what you're doing here, and... Um, if you've got a quadratic, which is degree two, and a linear, which is degree one, the most points of intersection or solutions you can have is degree times degree. So when it's a line and a parabola, you can have a total of um, two, two times one. When it's a quadratic and another quadratic, notice this one's an ellipse, this one's another ellipse. So degree two times degree two, you could have a total of up to four. Look at anywhere from zero to four total solutions. Okay. Solutions. Solutions. Okay. So let's do this one. This one, I'm going to warn you. I just did this one. It doesn't work out nicely. That's okay. Okay. So we've got y equals 2x minus 3. I've already got the y by itself, so I might as well square this and plug it in for y squared. So y squared is going to equal this thing squared. I don't know how to do that. Um, let's just square it. So 2x minus 3 times 2x minus 3. The first term is going to be 4x squared. Your outers are going to be minus 6x plus another minus 6x, so minus 12x. And your lasts are going to be plus 9. So x is equal to 1 fourth times y squared times all this. 4x squared minus 12x plus 9. So x equals... Distribute the one-fourth, I get x squared plus um, 6x, that's like 12x, um, I think that's, sorry, that's not plus 6x, that's one-fourth times negative 12x, so that's minus 3x, then I have plus 9 fourths, okay, let's get everything on one side of the equation, we're going to have to solve the quadratic x squared minus 4x plus 9 fourths. Let's try to factor it. I don't like that fraction. I'm going to multiply both sides by 4. I get 0 equals x squared minus 16x plus 9. Okay, does that thing factor? Well, you could find the discriminant, see if the discriminant is a perfect square to determine it, if it factors. I found the discriminant. The discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac, which comes out to be um, 112. That's not a perfect square. This does not factor. We have to use the quadratic formula. So x is going to equal opposite of b, plus or minus square root b squared, 256 minus 4 times 1 times 9. That's your discriminant. Ahead of time, I figured that out. That was 112 over 2 times A. Um, oh, sorry. This was a... This is a 4. And I multiply both sides by 4. That's 4x squared minus 16x and then plus 9. Okay. So over 2A, so that's going to be over 8. So x equals 16 plus or minus square root of 112 over 8, which is 16 plus or minus. Um, 16 divides into 112. So we get 4. And we got a 7 left over over 8. Okay. 
um, then you can factor 4 out of the top and reduce that. So x is going to equal uh, divide by 4, divide by 4, divide by 4. So 4 plus or minus rad 7 over 2. Okay. Now, we need to plug this in. There are two answers. I'm going to use this space over here. I'll solve this one on another sheet of paper. I didn't give you enough room here. Okay, so for one of your x's, the x is 4 plus rad 7 over 2, comma y. Let's find our y value. y equals 2x minus 3. 2 times x minus 3. Our x value is this, 4 plus rad 7 over 2. Notice the 2's cancel. I've got 4 plus rad 7 minus 3, or 1 plus rad 7. Then the other x value is going to be 4 minus rad 7 over 2. My y value here, y is 2x minus 3. So 2 times my x, 4 minus rad 7 over 2, uh, minus 3. The twos cancel. We've got four minus rad seven minus three. So that's going to be one minus rad seven. And there are your two points of intersection. Now notice if I ask you to do this without a calculator, you cannot give me a decimal answer. I will want an exact answer. Okay. okay. I'm going to come here. Um, this one right here you can do on your calculator, but I'm not going to do this one. I tried it, it comes out too messy. So I'm just going to tell you right now, let's skip this one. Okay. Let's go on to the next page. Try a couple more of these. If you understand the idea right now, and you just simply want to go ahead and try these on your own, and I will post the solutions, that's fine. You can go ahead and do that. Okay. Um, so this one, 9x squared plus 32y squared. That's an ellipse, and here I've got 3x squared minus y squared. The signs are different. They're both squared terms. That's going to be a hyperbola, so I've got an ellipse and a hyperbola. I'm going to do this. I'm going to get the y squared by itself. So y squared equals 3x squared minus 3. So add the y squared to this side, subtract the 3 over there. I'm going to plug this in for y squared in the first equation. 9x squared plus 32 times 3x squared minus 3 equals 324. Okay, so I've got 9x squared plus distribute. 32 times 3 is 96x squared minus 96 equals 324. Okay, so 96 plus 9, that's 105x squared equals 324 minus, or plus, sorry, plus 96 gives you 420, divide by 105, divide by 105, x squared equals 20 divided by 105 is, um, that comes out to be 4, so x is plus or minus 2, okay? Remember, don't just give me a list of x's and a list of y's. We need ordered pairs. So when x equals 2, y is going to equal, I'm going to use the second equation. I've got y squared equals 3x squared minus 3. So y squared equals 3x squared is going to be 2 squared, so 3 times 4 minus 3. y squared equals 12 minus 3, or 9. So y squared equals 9, so y equals plus or minus 3, okay? So when x is 2, y could either be 3 or negative 3. So the first two solutions, 2 comma 3 and 2 comma negative 3. That works out nicely, okay? Now let's say when, remember, x could also be negative 2, when x equals negative 2, okay? We're going to say y y squared again equals 3x squared minus 3. So y squared equals 3 times negative 220 squared. That's 4 minus 3 
So I got 12 minus 3, which is 9. So again, y will be plus or minus 3. So when x is negative 2, y could either be 3 or negative 3. So there's your four answers there. You can double check. You can graph these on your calculator if you'd like. Double check your answers. Okay. Let's do this one. x squared plus y squared plus 4x equals 21. That's a circle. 2x squared plus y squared equals 33. That's an ellipse. Okay. Um, I'm just going to solve the second equation for y squared and plug it into the first equation. 33 minus 2x squared. Plug that into the y squared in the first equation. I get x squared plus 33 minus 2x squared plus 4x minus equals 21. So I just plug that in, replace the y squared with this thing. Double check that x squared plus 33 minus 2x squared plus 4x equals 21. So I got a negative 1x squared plus 4x. Subtract the 21, get plus 12 equal to 0. Let's multiply by negative 1. x squared minus 4x minus 12 equals 0. So I could factor that x minus 6. x plus 2 equal to 0. So x will either equal 6 or negative 2. Okay, let's do when x equals 6. What y values go with that? Just use the second equation, 2x squared plus y squared equals 33. So 2 times x squared, 36 plus y squared equals 33. That's 72 plus y squared equals 33. y squared equals 33 minus 72 is negative 39. Ooh, that's not possible. Okay, so this one doesn't work. Now let's try when x is negative 2. When x equals negative 2, we've got our equation. It's y squared equals 33 minus 2 times x squared. So y squared equals 33 minus 8. Or 33 minus 8 is 25. So y equals plus or minus 5. Okay. So when x is negative 2, y could be 5. Or when x is negative 2, y could be negative 5. Okay. There's your two answers there. And let's do this last one. x squared plus y squared equals 25. y equals x squared minus 5. Okay. Sometimes these are really easy to simply graph without a calculator. So that's a circle with a radius of 5 centered at the origin. This is y equals x squared minus 5, okay? So that's going to be a parabola opening up. The vertex at 0, negative 5. So this one just goes like this, okay? You graph this on graph paper and you count it up, you might be able to even find these points of intersection. A lot of the other ones are a little bit more difficult to draw. This one maybe we could have if we completed the square, got that into standard form. Let's solve this one. We have y equals x squared minus 5. Actually, you know what I want to do? Why don't I solve the second one for x squared? So x squared equals y plus 5. And then I can plug that in for x squared in the first equation. Okay, so y plus 5 replaces x squared plus y squared equals 25. So I've got y squared plus y subtract 25 over minus 20 equals 0. That's going to be y plus 5, y minus 4. So y equals negative 5 and positive 4. So let's find when y equals 4. Okay, let's plug into the second equation. x squared equals y plus 5. So x squared equals 4 plus 5, 9. So x will be plus or minus 3. Okay, so that gives me ordered pairs 3 comma 4. So x could be either 3 or negative 3, and the y will be 4. 
Okay, and that was in the case where y equals 4. Now when y equals negative 5, so I've got x squared equals y plus 5. So x squared equals, oh, we get negative 5 plus 5, we get x squared equals 0. So x equals 0. So that's going to be 0 comma negative 5. Let's see if that vibes with our graph. So 3 comma 4, remember, this is a point on the circle. Think about if this is the point 3 comma 4. That makes sense because if you drew a right triangle, 3, 4, 5, the radius is 5. Same with this point over here. That would be negative 3 comma 4. That makes sense. This point here is 0 comma negative 5. Okay, so that's this point, so it looks like that all works. Final thing down here in general, the maximum number of intersection points equals the product of the degrees of the two relations. I know I mentioned that before, but for example, if you have a quadratic and another quadratic, like a hyperbola and a parabola, the degree is two, degree is two, multiply those together, there's four possible solutions. Okay, if you have a quadratic and a line, a hyperbola and a line, you could only have two. Quad, uh, quadratic, a hyperbola is quadratic, a linear is first degree. Okay, if it's two linears, you have one times one. You can only have up to one solution. All right. Thank you all for watching.